Hi, I'm Dave Jones. I've got my Tektronix oscilloscope here and I'm going to show you a rather interesting effect that you may not have seen before or you've heard of but you may not know that it actually applies to the humble oscilloscope probe. I've got my standard Tektronix 200 megahertz P2200 probe here and let's take a look at this effect. The uh, single channel, I've got it set up to 100 millivolts per division, 500 microsecond time base set to normal trigger, and the trigger level's at about 50 millivolts or thereabouts. And I've got my probe here set to uh, times 10 position, and watch this. Look at that. Look at that effect. I'm just gently tapping that probe on the desk there. And you'll notice that this will change a bit depending on the surface I've got. Obviously, if I tap it on the bench here, that's a hard surface. So that's generating a lot of uh, Gs into the actual probe itself. Now, if I put it onto the uh, anti-static mat over here, which is spongier, it's a similar kind of response. It's uh, slightly, it's the same frequency response, but uh, the response is a little bit dampened. Now, one of the keys to this is the orientation, the physical rotation, orientation of the probe when it actually strikes the surface like this. Now, if, if I've got this switch on the other side here, over here, that's the one, that's the position that generates the most amount. Now, if I just rotate it so that the um, switch is on the top there, so I've rotated it 90 degrees, it still does it, but we get a different response and it is dampened. And if we rotate it 90 degrees again, so we're 180 degrees where we uh, were from before, you notice that there's, once again, very little shock response. And we rotate it another 90 degrees, and we're getting back there, but we have to have the probe around facing the other side to get that effect. And if you're wondering if times 1 or times 10 position makes a difference, well, we'll put it on times 1 here, and we'll do it again. There it is. It really doesn't make much difference at all. And if you're wondering what sort of voltage levels we can get out of this, well, this is 500 millivolts per division, well over uh, 2 volts peak to peak. And we don't have to just tap it on the bench either. We can actually tap it with a screwdriver and use it as a set of drumsticks. Neat. If you're wondering what happens when we short out the probe, well, I've got some alfoil here, as we call it in Australia. You guys might call it something different. As you can see, you can see the really sharp drops on this waveform. It is remarkably different. And it's not just the probe either. If we just sit the probe down there and we tap the input compensation circuit like that, bingo, you can get another response. So what's causing this? Well, it's probably a little bit complex, but what it uh, ultimately is likely to come down to are the uh, ceramic capacitors used in these probes for compensation. Um, some probes, this one doesn't, but some probes will actually have an adjustment uh, pot there as well, so they'll have an adjustable capacitor as well, and also in the, um, in the probe connector over here has a similar sort of circuit. I've got my little DaveCAD drawing here of a multi-layer ceramic capacitor and this is how they're constructed they're actually that's why they call them an MLCC multi-layer ceramic capacitor because they are made up of multiple layers these ones are highly susceptible to what's called the piezoelectric effect and I won't go into detail of what the piezoelectric effect is but it, it uh, is is basically um, if like a uh, a shock or vibration sensor will be a similar thing it'll be a piezoelectric material like this, like a capacitor, essentially like a capacitor, but it's tuned for, uh, you know, a flat response, a flat shock response. But uh, multi-layer ceramic capacitors can have exactly the same effect. It's not nearly as linear, but it can certainly generate some high voltages, and it works both ways. If you apply a uh, shock or a vibration into the capacitor, it will generate a voltage. But likewise, it will also generate sound output if you input a specific frequency at a high enough level. Now, don't confuse this piezoelectric effect with what's called the triboelectric effect, which typically applies to cables. So there you go, that's a rather unusual effect, which you may have to watch out for. Give it a go, it's rather interesting. Try it out with your probe on your scope and see what you get. Catch you later.